Hello, my friends. Welcome again. Wow, it's a special day, and uh, I'll get to it in a second. But uh, we're going to give it a few minutes uh, for uh, more of our friends to come in. And uh, I think we have both cameras. We have YouTube. We have Instagram. We have Facebook going. So we have everything figured out today. And I must tell you, Celia, how are you? Tina, <laughs> you know, the, the same, you know, my same great friends are the ones who are always there, you know, on the dot. And I am so proud. Let me tell you, Deb, uh, this Deborah, hey, hey, I'll tell you why I'm so proud today. We started on the dot of two o'clock. I promised you we would start. Uh, Alex, have we started over here on live? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Because I can't seem to see it over here. Would, yeah, you start, yeah. oh, would you start it over here for me? That's why I could. So anyway, we started on time. So we're just going to give it two minutes uh, for people to come in. And uh, let's see. Um, I have people streaming in, you know, from all over. Uh, it's truly a special day, I can tell you, uh, for me and for. Well, uh, can I set it? Uh, I just want to see it over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see the light. Yeah, yeah. And just put it down on mute. I'm talking to my, uh, you know, I have Alex over here who's working in the background. And, you know. Today is a truly special day, and I'll tell you why. It's Mother's Day, and for me, you know, my dad passed, you know, uh, some time ago, and so it's really my mom that I have, and it's always hard for me to write about my mom, right? It's, hey, Sharon, Danisa, how are you, Melva? Oh, man, I see all my, uh, all my crew are in town. <laughs> you know, I was concerned because I wasn't sure that most of you would, uh, I wasn't sure that most of you would make it because it's Mother's Day. And I, and I know, you know, many of you are moms. So I'm really appreciative that you would show up uh, today. But like I said, it's always very hard for me to write about my mom uh, or to talk about my mom in specifics because there's just so much she's done. And uh, I called her earlier today and I, I don't know if she's watching the show. She's in Dallas right now uh, for, for a while. And, but I'll tell you about my mom. You know, I'm going to give you two things that sort of help you understand what my mom has done for me. And, and in, in terms of what moms do, it is unbelievable the relationship between a mom and her child, whether it's a boy or a girl. When I came to the U.S., what got me started in life was I came to the U.S. at 21 years old. And I told you, many of you know my story. Right. I came on an airplane. I was 21 years old, just graduated from college. I had two hundred and fifty dollars. What I didn't tell you. Was that not only was this 30 years ago when two hundred and fifty dollars in Lagos was probably like at the annual wage of, of a middle class worker, that money came from my mom. My mom worked as a nurse. She didn't, she wasn't rich. You know, we, we were upper middle class, you know, we lived a good life, but not compared to a good life over here, but um, we lived a good life and we were happy. I had a great childhood. And uh, my mom gave me $250 in cash to come to the US. And uh, I mean, that's what, you know, she had to offer me. I mean, she had six kids and that's what really got me started. My father was very supportive, but he didn't want me to go. You know, he thought, you know, you just graduated from college, you know, do your youth service and do all that stuff. So my mom was the one who not only encouraged me, you know, at 12 years old when I decided I want to go to Harvard. She at every point and every, every step up to when I went at uh, 21 years old, she always, you know, anything I wanted to do. And she gave me that money and I never forgot. I mean, I give it back to her in spades, but just handing your child and letting him go at 21 years old and giving him something so precious to you i mean money was you know very precious at that time was a really big you know it really left uh, it, those little things leave an impression on your life uh the um another thing i'll share with you that my mom did hey tina <laughs> i see you i see you you want to learn more i got a lot for you here i got a lot thank you thank you i'm back from vacation now one thing my mom did for me last year that is hard to replace in anybody else. Um, as many of you know, I had a very difficult time. You know, last year was probably my most difficult personal struggle that I've ever had last year uh, towards the latter half, you know, personal you know, issues. And my mom, I called my mom, I remember that day, and it was in the height of the pandemic. People, uh, uh, men and women were sheltering their parents in place. If you're over 60 or 65 years old, my mom was 81. 
They were sheltering their parents. Their parents weren't going out because it was killing older people. I called my mom in July, the height of the pandemic. And I said, mom, I need you here with me. And the reason why I did was because I need, my mom is you know, a big part of my spiritual life. And I was, you know, I was, um, uh, I needed her, you know, I needed her support. And my mom said, when? The only question she asked was, when do you need me to come? And I said, as soon as you can come. I bought the ticket that day. My mom hopped on an airplane in the middle of a pandemic. Planes were, her plane was empty. She was her, the pilot, and maybe one or two other people. Nobody was traveling. Talk less of an 81 year old woman to come over to sit for five and a half months with her son in Los Angeles who was going through personal issues. She had her own life. She had her own friends. She had stuff she was doing. She was, you know, my mom is very, very spiritual. She was on the prayer groups and she has all this. She left it. She dropped it off all and came to spend almost six months with me last year. Many of you didn't know this. So if I were to say anything about my mom, I don't even know what to say. Mom, thank you. I love you. I love all the moms out there. There is nothing like a mom. The relationship a mother has with her child is undeniable. There's no teacher. There's no brother. There's no uncle. There's no daddy. There's no parent. There's no, there's no uh, step parent. There's only a, a, a parent, a mom has that type of relationship. And I'm really appreciative to my own mom. I know your children are appreciative to you. You're all appreciative to your moms. Uh, please call your mom if you haven't. Uh, I bet you all have. And I hope your kids have. If they haven't, you know, you better call them, tell them that, look, don't ever let this happen again. Um, so happy Mother's Day, mom. Not just to my mom, but also all the amazing moms out there, Melva, Tina, you know, T, all the great moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. Now, here's what we're going to talk about today, right? We're going to talk about um, something that's going to change your life, if you allow it to. I'm going to tell you how to take the next step in your life and become financially free. Take back control of your life and do the things that you need to do at the pace you need to do them and make as much money as you want or you need to make. I'm going to show you that today. But first, I need you to do one thing for me. We've had nine shows. I've given you the basics. Credit, banking, uh, paying off your debt, especially student debt. I've shown you how to, how to build the foundation. Now we're taking it to the next level. You've built the foundation. You're relatively secure. You know, if you have, I'm doing a, a more, another one of my spiritual uh, 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 mentors is my uh, brother-in-law, uh, uh, Reverend Abraham. And every Saturday I have a one hour session with him. You know, we go over, you know, a lot of mentoring and discipleship and he, you know, he was telling me about, you know, uh, you know, we were going over last weekend on a rock, how you build a foundation on a rock rather than on sand, because when the wind comes, it blows the, the house built on sand. And when you build it on a rock, you're built, uh, to last. I've shown you how to build your foundation. Besides Christ, you can't you can't skimp on that. You gotta have that. But beside that, on earth, I've shown you how to build your foundations for financial freedom over the nine le lessons. Please go back and listen to them if you haven't. Now, we're gonna take a, a step forward. And this actually came from someone who I heard speak, uh, who sent me questions last, uh, last, 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 uh, last week. She sent me a bunch of different questions about starting a new business. And also quite a few people sent questions about starting a new business. And I realized the light bulb went off. We're in a pandemic. Many people still can't work because, well, there's a pandemic. Not everybody's vaccinated. Some people um, haven't, the kids are still at home. So they have to, you know, provide, you know, they have to be at home. You can't just go out and hire a babysitter. You know, school hasn't reopened, but work has reopened. So you may not be able to work. And so, uh, and we're in the middle of uh, an economic crisis. So while there's jobs, you know, it may not be the job you want. What should you do? Start your own new business. So today, I'm going to start the process of showing you over the next three lessons how to start your own business. Today, I'm going to give you all the different types of businesses you can start. There's one for you. I bet there's one for you. 
on the list I'm going to give you today. And as a matter of fact, before we finish today, I'm going to give you a list of 100 where to go on my Instagram page, 107 different free business online courses you can take, 107. You can go in there. You can start today in a month or two or three, upgrade your skill, make another $10,000 or $30,000. Better yet, quit your job and go make another 85 or 90 or $100,000 out there or more. So today, I'm going to give you all those new businesses that you can start, where you can go to start them. I'm going to open your mind. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to show you the ABCs. So now you know the business that you want to start. After today, you should know the business you want to start. Then I'm going to give you the ABCs, how to incorporate the business, if you choose, how to hire employees. I'm going to show you how to go about structuring, designing, thinking about the business, competition, you know, the best places to start different types of businesses. And I'm going to give you the ABCs, the things, all the things you should be doing before you start a new business and all the things you should be doing within the first year of starting the new business. That's our lesson next week. You better not miss that. In two weeks, well, think about it. I've given you, I'm going to give you this week, all the businesses that you can start. And I hope you pick one. Next week, I'm going to give you all the ways to go about thinking about starting a business, all the ABCs. And then in two weeks, I bet you're asking me, hey, look, uh, Uncle Dave, how am I going to finance the business? I don't got any money. I'm going to show you how with or without your own startup capital, you can start your business. The different ways to finance starting your business. I'm going to give it all to you. I'm going to spoon feed you. And my only hope is that you take advantage of it. And let me talk a little bit about that for a second. Um, taking advantage of the opportunities ahead of us. I was uh, in, as you know, I mean, many of you who follow me, uh, hopefully most of you do, I was in uh, Arkansas. I traveled to Arkansas, took the red eye a couple of days ago, and I uh, I was in Arkansas. I was in the central uh, uh, central Arkansas and the Delta region. Those are some of the poorest parts of America, right? 80 to 90% black population. Uh, average income, $26,000. Many of those kids go to jail or they, you know, they, they die before they hit 18 years old. Most of those kids do not go to college. And so a big part of my mission now is to make sure that the 3 million poor and underserved kids in America get a chance to go to college with no student debt. And I started with 1,200 over the weekend. I'm going to be sending you, I'm going to be giving you a lot of that uh, information. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. So while I was there, I had a conversation with an Uber driver. <laughs> Funny enough, you know, he came to pick me up at the hotel and we were going to one of the schools. I was at two schools. One is the Lighthouse Academy um, uh, campus in Jacksonville. And the second is uh, Stevens Elementary School. And I'm going to be talking about those two schools because they're really amazing people, I mean, staff and students. But this Uber driver, you know, so I was, I was telling him about, you know, my mission in Arkansas to make sure 1,200 black kids, underserved children, get an education, open up a college fund, put our own money. I'm going to put my own money in there for 1,200 of them. And that's just a start. We have 200,000 identified that people have come to us and said, we got 200,000 kids. We want you to help them. So we have a mission here. But I started with these 1,200. And so the Uber driver said, well, what's your mission? And I said, my mission here is to make sure these kids are educated. And I said, but I feel like some of the parents, because I, you know, I was there talking to some of the parents, and I feel like many of them don't understand the value of a college education and how it helps the kid advance in life. You know, you make over a million dollars more if you have a college degree than if you have a high school diploma. And he said, well, are you sure these people don't understand the value of an education? And I said, well, I mean, that's, that's what it seems. And he said, David, is it possible that they do understand the value, but they're not willing to make the sacrifices for themselves or their children, which means they know the way, but they're not willing to stick their neck out. They're not willing to jump from one, one ledge to another. They're not willing to take that plunge, that dive. They're not willing to take that risk. They're not willing to put themselves out there in a way that they can make more or they can uh, achieve more. Is it possible? And I started thinking about that on the airplane ride. And I thought to myself, 
why am I doing this show? Who am I doing this show for? Well, let me tell you who I'm not doing this show for. I'm not doing this show for those people who are satisfied. No, you can tune off now. I'm not doing this show for people who are happy with where they are in life, the educational achievement. If you make enough money, this is not the right show for you. If you have the perfect job and you want to be there making the same amount until the, for the rest of your life, this is not the job for you. If you're happy with the amount of taxes you pay, maybe you want to pay even more because you're a good citizen. This is not the show for you. If you're not interested in starting a new business, if you're not interested in lifting yourself, lifting your children, making sure your kids could become millionaires and billionaires, the one, one of the 1%, making sure you give your kids a chance in life to be able to do the things that they need to do to help you someday maybe buy a house for you, maybe buy two houses for you, maybe buy you a Range Rover. If you're not interested in any of those, then this is not the show for you. This is the show for people who are willing. They want to learn. They want to grow. They want to make more money. They want to advance in their careers. They want to advance in life. They want to do better for themselves, better for their communities, better for their children, better for their spouse. For those people who wake up every morning and think about how can I either make myself, my family, or the world a better place by either making more money and using it to help myself, my family, or the world? A, a different career, whatever it is. If you want to improve yourself, this is the show for you. So I want to make that demarcation. So for the Uber driver, I didn't actually get his name. We were just talking through, I forgot to ask him his name. Thank you for actually helping me see that there's some people who don't want to learn. And there's nothing you can do to get those people to learn. A lot of those people, they come on shows like this, they give us thumbs downs, you know, they make comments, you know, they talk about, you know, they, you know, they interfere with some of the people who want to learn. So today, I want to let you know, for those of you who are not here to learn, you don't need to be here. Now, for my friends out there who are willing to learn, hi T, I see you're one of them. Okay, hey Dale, Al Aliyah, thank you for joining. Sharon, I see you. <laughs> All my friends are in here. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Thank you very much for coming. So, let's now jump in, all right? But before we jump in, uh, into the best type of small businesses to start. Let me tell you a few rules, a few ground rules, right? The first is, whatever business you decide to start, you got to be knowledgeable. You got to know about the business. You can't just go start something that you don't know about. You got to know about that business almost as well as everybody else, sometimes even better than everybody else. If you're not good enough in one of those things I list out for you today, go take a, a course. I'm going to give you a course before. I'm going to spoon feed you. I told you, I'm going to show you the way. It's up to you to take the path. I'm going to show you a list of 107 business courses that you can take on my Instagram uh, link in a few minutes uh, well, before the show is over. So the first thing is you have to be knowledgeable about what you do, about what you do, the small business. That way, it's something, why would I want to use your service, not the other guy? Because you're better. Why are you better? Because you know more. So you got to be knowledgeable about it. Second thing is you got to be passionate. This is something that you feel strong in your bones that you can make a difference on. Don't go into something where it's just a job. There's one thing, one of my biggest heroes, Warren Buffett, he said something very, very important. Uh, I was, you know, he came to, I was at Harvard Business School. He came to talk to us and he said, you know, we used to have all these, you know, really smart people. Bill Gates, you know, came up, Andy Grove, who used to run Intel. And, and Warren Buffett said something very, very interesting. He said, because uh, somebody asked him, what's the best advice you can give a college student? And he said, never settle. Don't go into a job that is not your passion. Because you're going to waste time. Life is very short. Even if you have to wait, even if you have to be an apprentice, even if you have to do it for free, make sure you do something you're passionate about. So the next rule, right, is that this has to be something not just that you're knowledgeable about. The new business you get into has to be something you're passionate about. Number three, there has to be demand. I don't care how wonderful your product or service is. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how, how great the idea is if there's no demand, if you're selling snow cones in the winter in New York, who's going to buy it? If you set, set up a hot tea stand in LA or Miami in the summer, who's going to buy it? So you have to make sure there's demand for your service, right? Some of the things, now the fourth, some of the things I'm going to be telling you 
you may need to go get retrained for. You may need to retrain yourself. As a matter of fact, there's a big debate in America today, right? We have 8.2 million jobs lost since the pandemic. And the number of employers looking for jobs is off the chain. Everybody wants to hire people, even us. I'm hiring. I'm looking for people. Everybody's looking for people because we're expanding. People are not taking the jobs. Restaurant workers aren't taking jobs. Hotel workers aren't taking jobs. Bus boys are like, look, I don't want a job. I can stay at home. And guess why? They can collect the pandemic relief of $750 a week. That's like $3,000 a year. Look, why go get a job as a bus boy or waiter if you can make that money? But there's also another reason why we have this discrepancy of so many people. There's so many jobs out there and so many people are not taking the jobs. It's because many people don't have the necessary skill. Many people have been out of work for a year, maybe even a year and a half, and they don't have the necessary skills. So you may have to go get retrained. You may have to go do a course. How? I'll show you how. I'll show you the courses. They're free. I'll give them to you. Just give yourself a couple of months of studying. It'll open up your mind, and you'll learn something else that can actually really help you in your life. So... Now to the best type of small business. Now let me give some credit to Business News Daily. Business News Daily was amazing. I love that website, Business New Daily, businessnewsdaily.com. A lot of the information today came from there. So please go check it out if you need to. Now let's start with the types of small businesses. Let me see what my people are saying over here. Hi, T. Oh, you're taking notes? <laughs> T says she takes, she's taking notes. You better take notes, but you don't have to take notes. Actually, just come back and watch it. You know, there's, uh, there's no need for you to be distracted. Uh, T said, you want to build generational wealth for my children and future grandchildren. I love that. Generational wealth is the key buzzword of the day. And it's very, very important for us to be building that for our children and grandchildren, like all the uh, races do. We got to be doing it for ourselves. So now let's, let's start. The first type of business I'm going to talk to you about that's easy to do from your home during a pandemic or outside of a pandemic is called online bookkeeping and accounting and taxes. And the reason why I start with that is because I'm jaundiced because I, uh, when I came to the U.S., I was 21 years old. Uh, I didn't know anyone. I didn't, I mean, I knew a few people, but I, I didn't really, you know, have like really, really close tight family or friends or anybody like that. And so I started working, you know, I was homeless for a while, but then uh, even while I was homeless, I mean, I was living in, an, uh, in a, a, a building for sale. I was looking for jobs and I found multiple jobs. And, and right after I got fired. Yep, I got fired from Subway. That's a true story. I was 21 years old. I got I had a college degree, accounting degree, and I got fired from Subway. Why? Because I couldn't clean. They said clean. I couldn't. I didn't know how to clean. I ain't cleaning. I ain't really clean that much. I didn't, I didn't know how to clean expensive equipment. I got two times. She gave me a chance. I got fired. So right after I got fired from Subway, I decided, you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hands. And so I went to this place called H and R Block. I took a class taxes because tax season was coming. This was around January, February. It was like a month class. And after I took that class, I think I paid, I don't know, maybe $500, $1,000. It was, it was a long time ago. I was certified to start preparing taxes for people. So I started my own little business. In addition to working as a, as a waiter in a restaurant and doing consulting, in addition to working as an accountant, I actually started my own small businesses doing taxes during tax season. I was charging people like $150, $200, $250 to do their taxes. It was legal because I was certified by the by the by H and R block through the IRS as a certified tax preparer. I was making money, my own business. So people would come visit with me. They'd sit down. I'd spend a couple of hours doing, you know, doing their stuff, you know, filling out the paperwork learning about them, asking them questions. It took me maybe half an hour and I'd make $150, $200 for half an hour to an hour, maybe an hour, maybe two hours worth of work. It was a great business. That's how I was able to save in 25 years, sorry, in four years, barely ever making anything more than five or $7 an hour. I, uh, when I worked, I was able to save enough, almost $25,000 in four years, despite the fact that I was, you know, uh, you know, I, I wasn't paying for rent for a while because I was homeless. Anyway, that's the one uh, thing that was easy for me because I had an accounting background. Right now, if you have an accounting background, bookkeeping background, business background, go take that course on H&R Block. It's tax season now. Well, it's kind of late, but 
they still, most people file extensions, right? You can do a course, even if it's for next year, but that's not the only business thing you can do. There's so many, many different jobs available in the accounting world, accounts payables, accounts receivables, bookkeeping. I know I'm paying a bookkeeper $50 an hour, an outside bookkeeper. I'm paying a bookkeeper $50 an hour to actually do my QuickBooks. All you have to do is learn how to do QuickBooks. Go to quickbooks.com, quickbooks.intweet.com. Take their class and you can start doing bookkeeping for people. It's really amazing. So I wanted to start with accounting just to let you know and those, the taxes now and the business and the accounting and the accounts receivables and the accounts payables, you can do from your home. And nobody is meeting people now. Why would you go meet people? You can actually do it right from your home. So keep that in mind. What else can you do? Well, I'm going to give you a few places actually now that you can go to if you want to start. I always want to feed you uh, the information that you need. I don't want any excuse like, uh, Uncle Dave, where should I go? I'm going to show you where to go. I'm going to tell you what to do, how to do it. I'm going to show you a way to do it. Now it's going to be up to you to go do it, okay? So there's four places you can go to actually really start. One of them is called in quickbooks.intuit.com. You can take a class. You can learn how to do QuickBooks. And then, boom, with the economy expanding and growing, there's tens and tens and hundreds of thousands of, of, of new businesses that need help and old businesses. They need help. There's not enough people doing it. I'm paying a lot of money for it. And so there's a lot of other companies paying a lot for it. There's also freshbooks.com, right? You can go to freshbooks.com. You can learn their system, and then you can start selling it. There's sage.com, and there's waveapps.com. Four different places for you to go if you have a business background, an accounting background, or even if you're just interested, even if you don't have a background in business. If you're interested in making money in the business field, on your own, working from home, in your pajamas, <laughs> in your pajamas, if you like, you don't have to leave home to make money. Let's see what else. I had dozens. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go over these. All right. So I'm going to put all of them on. By the way, I'm going to have my new David Adifeso uh, website up over the next week or two. And so all of this information, you can easily all these links and all these things that I'm giving you. You can easily go over there. And you can get them. Um, it's not ready yet. I'll let you know when it is. A couple of weeks, maybe a week or two. So a consultant. <laughs> How about being a consultant? Many people think a consultant is a big name that has to go work for McKinsey and Co. or Bain Consulting, some big name strategic operational consultant. No. How about social media? You like social media? I bet you do, because you're on social media now. We did a study last year uh, on one certain market that we were going after at Suchi. And in that market, it was a rural area in one part of the country that's going to go unnamed. And we found out, based upon our study, that some of those people there, most of them actually, spent an average of six hours a day on social media. Six hours a day. That's a, an expert. That person knows the in and outs of social media. If you do, why not become a social media manager? You can make as much as two, three, four, five thousand a month just posting for someone. <laughs> you didn't know that. You could just make, go find, there are a lot of people out there who need, they don't know how social media works. I know, I didn't know how social media works when I started two years ago, two and a half years ago. I had to get a social media. She did a great job getting me started and so up and running. How about a social media, how about marketing? If you're creative, you like to sell stuff, you know how to design things. How about become a marketing consultant? Go online, there's lots of jobs. You create a brochure, you can talk about branding, right? talk about sales, talk about helping a company get to the next level. There's many, many, many opportunities. Public relations, you don't have to go uh, and sit in an office. You can do it from your living room. There are many, many, many consulting jobs that you can do. I got a long list for you. I'm just gonna keep going through all of them, but please make sure that you pick the one that you're good at. And that one, that one that you're going to do, make sure you do you do all the you do all the research and you study it as much as you can. So I'm gonna give you a long list. I'm gonna keep going. Online reseller, especially clothing resellers. It's so amazing because you know one of my heroes is Jack Ma. I've never met him. You know I've met Bill Gates. You know I've met a lot of you know uh, tech people. I've never met Jack Ma, uh, and I know he's in trouble now in China. You know so I don't know why, but um, he talked. You know what Jack Ma did 
was similar to what Amazon did, right? He basically built a platform to allow people to sell goods to other people. And he did it in a very similar to what Jeff Bezos did with Amazon. But guess what? You can be one end, can be the customer. The person who actually, not the customer that's buying, the customer of Jeff Bezos or Alibaba that's selling. You can literally be the person who's on there that I'm buying. I buy stuff from Amazon. I just had some things come through on Amazon. You could be the person I'm buying it for, from. So many people think it's hard to get started. Not really. Go into your closet. You like fashion. You like designing. You have an eye for, you know, cool things fashion wise. Why not become a fashion consultant that sells stuff online? Start with your own clothes. There's many, many places you can go to eBay. You've heard about this. Poshmark, Mercari. There's places you can go to to actually sell your own clothes, clothes you don't need. People will buy those clothes. And then you can open up your own store, your own online store. You can buy clothes from here for $50, sell it over here for $75. It all happens online and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, everything okay there, Alex? It looks like we're uh, going to make sure that we're connected over here. Take a little mini break. Looks like we lost. Um... Are we good? Okay. So I'm not done. So so what you do is then you can open on your own online store. Seriously, your own online store. And in your pajamas or your boxer shorts at home, you can be buying stuff. You can become a, a reseller, buying stuff and selling stuff. And guess what? All these things I'm teaching you, there's another rule I'm going to add that I didn't add in the beginning. Here's the rule. Set up a business that's scalable. Here's what I mean. It's okay for you to start the business and do the work. You're working hard. You're working every day. You, you know, you go, you know, you want to make it, you're working 9, 10, 12, 15 hours a day. It's okay for you to do that. That's called earned income. But after a while, you're not going to work till you die, right? No. After a while, you want to start the process of hiring other people to do the work for you. How do you do that? Make sure to pick a business that's scalable. Accounting and bookkeeping, I told you, is scalable. Becoming an, a consultant is scalable. Online reseller is scalable. All of these businesses are scalable. Why? Because the truth about life and how to really make money is when you hire one person, and you pay that person $1 in income, you're able to charge somebody else $2 for that person's services, and you make a profit of $1. That, my friends, it's called sleep money. Sleep money. I love sleep money. It's passive income. It doesn't all have to be real estate. It doesn't all have to be uh, stocks and bonds. You can actually make sleep money by operating your own business. So let's keep going. Uh, online teaching. This My friend asked about this last week. Online teaching. The pandemic has opened up a new universe of online teaching. The quality of our public schools is still not good. Many, many parents know this. So you add the pandemic to the fact that they don't want their kids out there. Plus the quality of the educational system, our public educational system is still not great. And you add that to the fact that many kids need to be tutored. Online teaching is a low-hanging fruit for anybody. You can literally start to teach math, physics, chemistry, business, literature, French, Spanish, whatever you're good at. You don't even have to have a formal education. You can go get an associate, a form, you can go get a certification for it, but you don't have to. If you're good at it, you can start. Even if you don't really have a skill, you speak English, right? There's a lot of people, one little sick, there's a lot of people who want to get better at speaking English. I remember I once had a, 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 a designer, a, a UX guy, a user experience and user interface. You know, he, he wasn't, you know, he couldn't really speak English that well, but he was very talented. So we actually sent him to English classes three times a week to do English classes. There's many, many, many companies and people who have, you know, who would love to learn English. You speak English, right? Why not go get a job, even if it's a part-time job from your basement or your home, teaching English to foreign students? You're getting some ideas, aren't you? 
Hi, Sharon. What did you? Yes, that's what I was thinking. Facebook could be really tricky. Facebook has a community marketplace uh, uh, specific to where you live. Yes, yes, it does. Facebook does. But there's many other places beyond Facebook. Etsy, you know, there's Amazon. You know, there's many, many places you can go to start your online reseller business. So um, now, where are places that you can go, you know, to... Um, uh, to to learn about how to uh, go about you know starting a, a teaching business, I'm going to give you four. One is called OpenLearning.com. OpenLearning.com. One is called HelpHub.com. One is called Teachable.com. The other is called AliAcademy.com. Those are four places you can go. You can pick which what you want to teach, and just go through that process. My friends, there's many many online businesses that you can be in. You know, and I'm going to keep going. Medical courier services. Do you have a car? I don't know why you would, because after the pandemic, nobody's driving anymore. But if you do have a car and you're good with time management, why don't you become a courier? What does that mean? You get, did you get tested for COVID-19? I'm assuming, you know, some of you did. Most of you did. Hopefully all of you did. Have you gotten your vaccination? Those vaccinations are delivered. The, the COVID tests are delivered to a lab, right? So after you, you know, they, you know, they take your blood, oh, they, 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 so they do the swab, you know, they put in a little container. Somebody has to transport that to the lab. That's called the courier. It could be you. You literally could go into that business. All you need is a car and you need to, 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 to have a good time management skills because you might be picking stuff up and dropping stuff, but you can make money that way. You know how much those people make, careers? Up to $27 per hour. That's about $54,000 per year. You don't have to have any skill, and you can do it part-time. So if you want to make some part-time work, why not become a medical career? Talking about careers and cars and transporting people, Uber, <laughs> Lyft, Airbnb, gig workers. You have a house? You have a room that you're not using? How about renting that out? The kids are, uh, are gone from school. Uh, they, they're gone to school. They're 18 years old. They're out of the house. Rent it out. I was in uh, Arkansas again last yeah, uh, uh, yesterday. I came back yesterday, and I was driving uh, with uh, another Uber driver, not the one I mentioned before, and he was like, you know what? The light went out. In my <laughs> don't ask me, you know, the light went out. Okay. If the light and the internet went out, he was like, I was Jared, my wife was there, we were just hanging. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna hop in the car and make a few bucks. And guess what? He was making, he was gonna work for two hours and he was gonna make money. It's easy. It's very easy. Uber, Lyft, there's many, many, but that's not all. I got more for you. Application development, apps and software development. Let me tell you something. You don't need to go to college if you want to become a, a software, if you want to become a software developer. You can if you want to. It gives you more of a grounding. You can go to boot camp. You can do a course, three months, six months. Now you still need to have a college fund to do that. You still need a college fund to pay those expenses. But you don't necessarily need for your college, even though it's admirable to get one. Because if you do, then you're called engineer. Do you know how much app developers and software, you know, people who write code, do you know what they make? 50, 60, 80, 100, 150, 200 thousand dollars. The demand is off the chain for app developers. If you can build an app, whether it's the back end or the front end, there are many, many. I'm gonna give you those ways. Don't worry. Before we are, we're done today, I'll give you those ways. I'll give you those places where you can get those things. The way you can get those. Uh, how are we doing for time? Okay, we're good for time. Okay, I'm not done yet. Okay, let's see what people are saying. Melva said, I do rent out three bedrooms in my house and I live in the basement. I love that, Melva. Melva just told me that she has a home with a basement and three bedrooms. Now, Melva, I'm assuming your kids are out of the house uh, and, and, and you know, the rooms are empty or you decided to buy a big house you know, so you can do uh, uh, Airbnb or, or just rent it out for long term. She rents out three of her rooms and she lives in the basement. Somebody else is paying her mortgage. I had another friend of mine who I was with last week, two weeks ago. We had a good conversation. You know what, he just bought his first house. He bought a duplex and you know what he did? He uses one, he and his wife live 
The second he uses for um, Airbnb. And guess what? That Airbnb not just covers its own cost for that one duplex. It also covers his own duplex. He's, he, he, that's free money. Imagine having somebody else pay your mortgage <laughs> and your property taxes. It's brilliant. So, Melva, congratulations. Melva said the kids are gone. I'm, I'm, uh, you've done a great job to get your kids. I hope all your kids call, right? I hope they called you on Mother's Day. They better call. Otherwise, Uncle Dave is going to call them and tell them to call next time. Anyway, we're not done. I got more for you. Transcription services. That's simply listening to what people say and typing. The advancements in medicine now, during this you know, pandemic and even before the pandemic, for many of my, my, um, my friends who are in the medical industry, they don't like to write anymore. You know how you see those doctors scribbling things and writing? No. With electronic medical records and advancements in technology, what doctors like to do now is to speak into a, a voice recorder. It records it, but they need the notes, right? They need the physical notes. A lawyer, lawyers don't like to type all the time. They like to speak. Somebody has to type those. Technology people. I was on a meeting with a, one of uh, a good friend of mine who he started two unicorns. That's $2 billion. Car. Each one is over a billion dollars now, two technology companies. I was having a good conversation with him uh, on Zoom. And there was a third party over there. It was me and him. And then there was another thing there, and I didn't understand what that thing was because it was dark and there was no picture, but it had some funky stuff. I thought it was a virus. I said, yo, what's this virus on you? He said, no, that's my transcription service. That thing is on there. So when we're talking, it records, and then it sends it to someone, and that person transcribes it. You got to be able to type fast, right? And you got to be able to deliver within 24 hours. So if I you know, want to, you know, if I transcribe today about voice, you got to be able to do it. If you have that time, you can do it from your home. If you can type, you can become a transcriber. Imagine that from your home. You don't need to be out there risking your life during the pandemic. You don't have to leave your kids if you're working at home. Uh, sorry, if you're, uh, uh, if you're homeschooling your kids because, you know, some schools are closed, you can actually really do this yourself and make money. Uh, uh, while you're at home. And those are all the things, uh, the little uh, uh, things I'm giving. Do you know how much transcribers make? <laughs> Up to $16 an hour. That's just, that's like free, you know? It's like six to 14 cents per line. Can you imagine somebody paying you to, for six, six, six cents or 14 cents per line. Imagine that. Take it. I mean, you got types, you know, you type on social media, right? <laughs> it's the same thing. Type and you can make money. Why not get paid for it? What else? Places you can go. Uh, I'm going to give you four places you can go if you want to be a transcriber and you want to go look for a job. Indeed is a good place, very, very good place to go. Jobs for travelers. Job for travelers is a good place to go. Help web is a good place to go. Help web. An angel list is also a good place to go if you're looking for a job as a transcriber. Hello. The next one is kind of interesting because I know a lot about it. It's called, from the other side, it's called a professional organizer. I am the most disorganized person alive. I can tell you that. If I didn't have a cleaner who comes twice a week, I didn't have assistants who were exceptional. Let me tell you some. My life was, my, my organize, the organization in my life was in shambles a few years ago. I was missing meetings because my you know, it was clutter everywhere. You know, my, I didn't, you know, because I don't like to clean that much. You know, it was just a bunch of mess. I had one assistant who came in, filed, organized, systematized, created a space I wanted to live in, both professionally and business. If you're an organized person, think of Marie Kondo. Go read one of her books. If you're an organized person, you like things where they're supposed to be. You can make a living doing that for a lot of people because there are a lot of people like me by nature or nurture, whatever it is, we're very disorganized and we're willing, instead of me spending three hours to redo my closet or rehang things and wash them and put them in place, my shoes, I got a lot of shoes, I got to organize those shoes, I need my paperwork set up in a certain way. Instead of all me spending all that time, I could pay somebody $25, $35, $40, $45, $50 an hour to do that for me. That could be you. There's many people like me. 
for you to get a couple of examples, I'm going to give you a couple of places that you can go to see people who are doing it. Maybe it can inspire you. You don't have to start nice and fancy and you know great website you'll get there start with listing yourself as as available and then starting with one customer and then two make sure they're happy because they're the ones who are going to refer you to other people and then three and four, before you know it you're a professional organizer a real professional organizer it's possible designorganize.com it's a website that i actually like it's called designed sorry design organized Dot com. Go in there and take a look. That's a professional organizer. That could be you. There's also somebody else you guys might know called Lisa Shields. She's in LA, you know, over here. And that's what she does, professional organization. So please go in there. You can do that too. What else? Cleaning services. You know, this, many people have a misconception about cleaners. Oh, that's the, I don't want to do that. And they're cleaning other people's stuff. Let me tell you something. Right after the recession in 2010, uh, 2008, 2009, in 2010, we decided to open up a New York office on Madison and 34th. So I opened one up. I hired some of the smartest Wall Street guys I could get. Some of them were my friends. And one of them introduced me to a client, a brother. He was maybe 60s, late 60s. He did the cleaning for almost all the downtown towers in New York. He was the one who, he had a whole team, a whole, a whole crew of people who every day, every night, after those Wall Street lawyers, those Wall Street investment bankers, the brokers, the traders, after they left, they would come in at seven, eight, nine. He had a whole crew, hundreds of people. They'll, that guy was a multi-millionaire. His job description, he was a cleaner. He started with one client. He did a great job. He went to the second client. What does it take to clean? Many of you clean your own homes. You do, right? And your homes are, some of your homes are sparkling, like really clean. Why not make money doing something? And if you're cleaning, you know, sometimes you're cleaning, you get in that zone, you feel good. You play music, you're dancing, you feel like maybe that's your thing. Maybe you actually really enjoy cleaning. Why not do it for other people? But it doesn't have to be you. You could be the business person. You can hire one or two cleaners to do the job. It's a great thing. It's a really great thing. I had a friend of mine the other day was telling me about how he was starting to clean carpets. He wanted to get into the carpet cleaning business. That's part of cleaning. Now, that carpet cleaning itself does take a certain degree of equipment. You need to buy the equipment. So you got to be able to afford it. You know, so I don't add that to the things. I'm, these things I'm teaching you, you, have, you need no capital. You could, when you want to hire new people, or you want to, um, uh, or you want to um, buy certain supplies, you might need capital. And we'll talk about capital two weeks away. And so that's why I didn't bring up uh, carpet cleaning. But it's a great job. You can charge. I mean, I get my carpets cleaned it's a few hundred dollars every so every six months or so. They charge me three hundred dollars a, a, a room. <laughs> this is this is LA. Anyway, that's you know how much you could. I I pay. I have a cleaning lady. I pay her fifty dollars an hour. Same thing my account, my bookkeeper makes. I'm this true story. $50 an hour. She's great. You see my place? Sparkling. Always. She comes twice a week. <laughs> so why couldn't you could you could you could be her boss? You could have hired her and 10 other people or 20 other people or 30 or 50 other people to span Los Angeles or to span Arkansas, to span Illinois, to, to do so whatever you do, as long as you do it well, you can make a lot of money. Alex, how much more time? Because I can keep going all this is, you know, this is fun for me. You know, there's just so many, 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 many more jobs. I don't want to take up too much time, but let's see. Oh, T said she plays her music when cleaning. <laughs> uh, you want to you wanna see? Alex wants to show people around. Okay, yeah, you can show my house. You know, she wants to show my living room. This is my living room. It's clean, though. Is it clean? It's pretty cool. Yeah, I got a clean living room. I don't I don't like dirt. I don't like dirt at all. <laughs> you know, even though if you leave it up to me, my living room is pretty messy. It's like, you know, I, you know, I mean, it's pretty cool, right? She does a good job. She makes, she earns her $50 an hour. Anyway, T said she plays music when she's, uh, when she's cleaning. That, that's your zone. Maybe that's your thing, right? Maybe that's what you like to do. You know, it's really great. And Sharon said, I love being organized. Organization is one of the top things that I like to do or what I can do. Well, there you go. Sharon, you got your, you got your, you got, you got where you are, you're calling. You should make a living 
helping people organize their own life. And let me tell you something. When you find that one person who helps you organize your life, let me tell you one secret. You can't live without that person because if they leave, your life goes into shambles. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a great job and you're making two, like you're a great lawyer and you're making $350 an hour, right? Every hour of your time, you charge your client $350 because you're a high, you're a good lawyer or a good, you know, whatever it is you, you do. And you get to pay somebody $50 an hour to organize your life as an example. Imagine if that person left, <laughs> you would now have to do that $50 an hour work. Why? When I can make $350 doing what I like to do and what I'm good at. So that $50 an hour, $25 an hour worker becomes critical to you. So if you do a good job, no matter what it is, in any of these things, your business will blossom, your business will grow, and you will make a lot of money. What else? Freelance copywriter. This is a good one. And I know because I use copywriters. I'm not going to lie. I'm busy. I love to write, but I'm very busy. And I can't always write things that I need to write. So I have a copywriter. We have one at TPG, you know, and we also have, I'm sorry, we have one at Suchi, and we also have one at TPG. For TPG, his name is Dan, and he's, he's, uh, he's freelance. He comes when we need him. And we pay him, you know, every article, everything he writes, we pay him a two, three, four hundred dollars. That's a lot of money just to write for a couple of hours. Two, three, four, two to two, three to four hundred dollars is how much we pay him. I, I have to edit it, I have to read it, I have to make sure I like it. Sometimes I change it. But still, you if you like the right good sentence construction, you understand, you know, how to communicate, why not be a copywriter? Why not be a freelance copywriter? You could literally make a lot of money. You could make $40 to $50 an hour. 40 to just for writing. If you like writing and that's what you do, please do that. There's a place I'm going to send you to. It's called freelancing.school. It's actually pretty long. We'll, we'll put it on the on our, on our Instagram, freelancing.school slash freelance. Just Google freelancing.school. Okay. Because it's a long, it's a long URL. But but I'll put it on, on, on my services. There's other services I want to skip. I know we're, we're running out of time. We want to try to keep this. We're already at 52 minutes. We want to try to keep this to 30 to 30 to 45 minutes. Although today was Mother's Day and I had to share my own, you know, love and experiences that I'd had with my own mom because I know all the moms out there feel that love, you know. So, um, so today was different. So I'm going to speed through a, lot, you know, the, a few of the others that, that could be very helpful to you. And then we'll circle back next week, okay? Home care services, people who take care of people in their homes. You don't need a huge amount of skill. There's many, many, as our population ages, studies show that between 2010 and 2050, over the, the 40 years, our aging population, people who are over, over 85, are going to increase by 351%. A lot of old people need help at home, right? Older, uh, not old is the wrong word. A lot of our senior citizens need help. So you can be, if you like caring for people, you like helping, but you can do that. Um, I'll give you the resource. Translation services. Again, you can interpret. You know, if you speak English and you're pretty good at it, courts. I know a good friend of mine who was a court uh, interpreter, you know, and you can actually do that for a living. Digital marketing. That's a hot area. Most of the advertising dollars is moving from TV and print all the way to online. Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube. If you want to make money, you have to, you could learn how to do digital marketing. There's so much money to be made. You know, I know we used to pay $2,500 a month plus a piece of the, you know, uh, of the ad buy for what an hour a day, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, but it's a skill that you can learn that you can do from your home. And it's not hard. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to have an accounting degree. You don't even have to have a marketing degree. As a matter of fact, a marketing degree could hold you back because marketing, you know, a lot of marketing talks about the old school. This is the new school. You could take a lot of courses on marketing. I'll show you some of those courses in a little bit. Uh, but uh, a place to look for work is a place called uh, Sprout Social. You know, you can go in there. You can find some work. Uh, food truck. I like this one. The only difference is it's a little bit expensive, you know, to get a truck. You know, some of those things could be pricey. But you can have a food truck. You can sell food. You know, I know it's expensive to have a restaurant. You know, sometimes you have to pay for the rent. But you can actually rent a food truck. And some places, like in Los Angeles, you can actually get a food truck. The state can actually sometimes finance your food truck if you're a minority. You can actually start selling food. 
You can go to some places like Whole Foods. They'll give you some leftovers. You can actually start with very, very low capital. Uh, landscaping. You know, if you have a lawn and you know how to cut, you know, grass, you you know, you have the, you can do that. You can start cutting people's lawns. Uh, and you don't always have to be the one who does it. You can hire a person. You can hire two. You can hire three. After a while, you can have a whole business where you're charging people, you know, $200 or $250 and you're paying your staff $100. You know, you're making sleep money. There's so many, many ways. What else do we have? Uh, real estate agents. Hallelujah. Real estate is the hottest asset class today. You can't find a house you know, to buy. It's hot. You know, so if you're in an area, you know your neighbors, you know, you know, you go get a real estate license. You know, it's, it's, it's not, you know, do it's a short one, two, three month course, right? Learn the, the, the trade and the thing and selling real estate, you can make a lot of money. You can make tens of thousands of dollars uh, per transaction. That's something you can do. Graphic designers, T-shirt printing, pet sitting. <laughs> how easy, if you like animals, how easy is it? To actually sit, you know, people have to travel sometimes, right? You have to go. I mean, I travel. I love animals. I grew up with dogs. I grew up with, I had dogs, I had cats, I had rabbits, I had a horse, I had, not a horse, I had turtles. You know, we rode horses, but we didn't have a horse. Uh, I had, I had dogs, we had uh, turtles. Uh, and um, I miss having a dog now. I really do. Uh, I wish I did. But um, if I did, which I soon I will, you know, when I can, you know, uh, you know, when I don't travel as much. Uh, if I did have a dog, because I do travel, I need a place for the dog to go because I don't want the dog at home alone for three or four or five days or a week. That could be your place, right? And you doesn't have to be in your house. You could have a section that's reserved for the dogs. You could, you know, if you like animals or cats, you know, there are people who will pay you for that. Anyway, I want to stop there. Um, I've said a lot. Um, Sharon asks, how can you clean and organize for rich people. It's very, very simple. You just have to find those people. It doesn't have to be rich people. Everybody, middle class, upper middle class, they will pay you. You know, you're rich people too. They will pay you to help you because, you know, organizing is honestly, it's a skill. It's a talent. It's a talent I don't have, right? It's a talent many people don't have. And if you have it, there's a lot of people out there who will pay you for it. Uh, let's see what else. Um, hi, Danisa. Uh, insightful rules to consider before starting a business and an interesting list of businesses to go. Ah, Denise, I like it. Passion and knowledge. That's exactly correct. You need passion and you need knowledge and you make sure the business is scalable. So I want to kind of stop there. You know, um, wow, I have a lot of great comments over here. I see my friends on Instagram. You guys didn't go to YouTube. So make sure to go to YouTube next time so you can, uh, so you can, uh, I can see you and I can talk to you and I can interact with you. But now, I'm going to give you something very, very useful. I'm going to give you a list of 107 business courses. As a matter of fact, I'm going to open it up over here. And some of these business courses are just amazing. And I would strongly encourage you, right, to go get these business courses. And if some of the things I've said, you don't have the skill, or maybe I didn't say something that you're good at, or maybe one of the list of the 18 to 20 things I mentioned, you, you know, didn't fit yours. Uh, there's still a way for you to make money by changing your career or adding a different source of income. It's 107 business courses online. It's available now on my Instagram, David dot adifeso that's my first dot my last name go on there it's on there as a link go to my bio some of these courses are truly amazing like truly amazing and they're all free within a month or two or sometimes three you can have a whole new skill you can start making a lot of money separately from what you're doing you can have a part-time job doing one of these things let me give you examples branding content and social media hello if you go to my instagram page and click on the link, you can possibly, you can learn how to brand and how to create content and how to be a social media manager. You can make thousands, maybe tens of thousands a month by working from your home as a social media manager. Go get the course, Building a Business. It'll show you how to build a business. There's another course uh, on uh, corporate finance. There's another course on um, customer analytics, how to analyze customers, now, data is very, very important, right? How do you use data from your clients to propel yourself uh, to make more money? Most businesses, I think, data is very, very important. Uh, digital transformation, entrepreneurship. 
financial management, global. There is a plethora of different ways and different taxation, introduction to taxation. You remember I told you about how you can make money using taxes, leadership through social influence. How do you become an influencer? In Arkansas, this young kid, he, he's uh, going to the Air Force. He came up to me. He said, you know, I'm, I'm 17 years old. I'm going to the Air Force. And I just want to learn how to, he said, I, I grew up in a very bad area, neighborhood. But because my dad was in the military, was in the uh, Air Force, we were able to travel. So I was, you know, able to remove, he was able to remove us from the bad neighborhood we grew up in. And he said, now I'm, I'm good. I'm great. I feel, you know, positive. I'm enlightened. I'm, I teach people about Christ and I teach people about, you know, he said, but I, how do I become an influencer? How do I impart my knowledge? So I was was teaching him how to you know use social media and he other tools to to become an influencer you can become an influencer go to this course go to david adifeso david adifeso on my instagram page and you can actually pull you know the the course uh, money and banking organizational behavior there's so much personal finance you can start teaching startups there's a course that teaches you how to create a startup yourself. Hopefully one day you can make a billion dollars. Those startups make so much money. Sometimes a lot of them fail. Ladies and gentlemen, it's really been a pleasure, you know, today. Thank you for inviting me into your living room during Mother's Day. Um, I love you very, very much. I look forward to seeing you next week. Now, next week, remember, I just told you all the things, all the different businesses, and there's more, and I'm going to give you more. There's 107 I'm going to give you um, uh, on, on my Instagram page. But what's the first step in starting a business? What's the second step? What are the mistakes most people make? Why do most small businesses fail? What are the things you can do to avoid those traps Seven out of 10 small businesses fail in the first few years. How do you avoid it? How do you make sure you don't run out of cash? How do you get to pick the best business partners for yourself? Those are the things. How do you incorporate? How do you hire the right staff? Where should you incorporate? Where should you hire staff? Those are the things I'm going to be teaching you next week. So please join me 2 p.m., Pacific time, Facebook, and um, YouTube. Love you very much. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>